Welcome everyone, I'm in Southern California today and behind me is the battleship known as the USS Iowa. They give tours throughout here on a daily basis, but I am going to be getting a special tour, if you will, into some of the off-limit areas and the nether regions, you could say, of this historic battleship. Would you like to tag along? Join me. Shall you? We're climbing up that. This is not tour, right? This is the, oh, this is no, no, no. This is way off tour. This is all behind the scenes. This is all behind the scenes right here. All right, I'm ready. All right. First stop, the O4 level. Essentially the navigation bridge. This is 17 and a half inches thick. It is three levels. This door right here weighs 4,000 pounds. You can see how thick it is. 17 inches, you said? 17 and a half. It's actually 17.3, but 17 and a half is easier to get your head around. Climb in. This is the main helm. This is where you steer the ship from. So this is basically the main control pillar. If you turn right. this, the, the, the rudders turn. Wow. Don't step on that yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a long, hard way down. That's not part of the tour. No, there would be a, a, a rudder angle indicator here. And then over to the left is what's called the engine order telegraph. You can see the port and starboard indicators for speed. The port. Yes. Starboard. Now, yes. is port the front of the ship? No, port is the left side. Port, four letters, P-O-R-T. Left, four letters, L-E-F-T. This is the actual captain's chair right yeah. here. Yeah, his insignia embroidered on the back. That is a periscope. This is a periscope, and it, it does not, it does not go up and down. It's it's hard mounted right here. You can't really see out because there's a co weather cover up top, but you can kind of look in there. You can kind of see a little bit of the hole. Now, the higher you get, does it get like tighter quarters? Oh, absolutely. Now I would talk to the pilot house. Do they ever talk back? Or oh yes. Now so I would talk to teletype repair. Now I would talk to uh, actually all three. <laughs> Combat information. So if there's center. someone in that room, they can talk back to you right on, now. On, a, on another squawk box like this. As far as you know, the ship isn't haunted, right? Certain there, <laughs> there is. To be honest with you, that is a sensitive part. Uh, that is a sensitive subject on Iowa because of the accident in 1989, April 19th, 1989. The ship suffered what's called an open breach explosion of the center gun on turret two. 47 men were killed. What you will never see on this ship is Ghostbusters or, uh, you know, those those paranormal in search of uh, outfits. The captain lives in a broom closet. The captain lives in a broom closet, yes. And that's really not hyperbole. No lights. So why would the captain live in something, you know, this minute? He is responsible for the ship. He is the ultimate responsibility for the ship. And that responsibility is 24-7. So he is going to be in, in a location where he is very, very close to command and control every second. This is a bed. What happens is this pulls out, there's a mattress folded up vertically there. That folds out. And look, he's laying here, and right here he's got a gyro compass. Uh, there would be a clock there, 
and he's got calm right here. You know, he can wake up in the middle of the night and just look at something and tell if he's on course and in the right speed. What was that? That was 10 o'clock. Oh, that's the timer. Yes. Oh, that's the clock. That ships bells. The ladders are starting to narrow. You also have to watch your back and your head when going up these. They don't make these for tall, overweight men. Oh, I just hit my head. Ugh. I just hit my head out there. The eighth level up from the main deck. This is what's called the battle bridge. The higher up you are, the better you can see, and the farther you can see. So this is pretty much the highest you can get on this oh. level? Oh, we can go higher than this. The higher up you go, the narrower it gets. So it, so at this point, it really, really starts to close in tight. Man, what that phone is. Yep. Wow. And what would this have been used for? Again, this is calm. Uh, it would have a label on it that tells you what circuit is. Uh, obviously, a captain or somebody is going to know. This is sound powered, push to talk. It doesn't need any electricity to work. Not the one with the not the one with flag on it, but the, the turret that's up closest to us. The center one the here. The center one. And and the, the guns were trained out to starboard. There's a big puff and the bloomers, those black fabric things, the bloomers blow off and all this. And stuff how many comes out. how many casualties were there? For, uh, everyone inside turret two was killed. Everyone. Forty seven men. Wow. Right below us right here, you can see the top level of the armored conning tower. You see that oval block right there, a couple decks down. That's where they could have thrown uh, Roosevelt if they needed to. In case of emergency. In case of emergency. The middle level, which we were in, and then that upper level right there, which is the gunnery officer's position. All of this is not part of the normal tour. Oh, no. So this is all just something you're showing like an exclusive for. This is an exclusive for Adam the Woo. I'm very happy to be here. I appreciate this. That's that's the forward stack right there. That's the forward smoke stack. When's the last time that omitted any steam or smoke? Probably 1990. That is for defending against anti-ship missiles. That fires 3,000 rounds a minute, you're gonna to try to shoot them down. But that whole defense system is three-pronged. You're gonna to try to fool it with chaff. You're gonna send up these chaff rockets, which make a big cloud of tin foil. That's jamming. You're gonna to try to jam the ship's missile and, 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 and scramble its brains. So you're going to try to shoot it down, you're going to try to fool it with tin foil, and you're going to try to scramble its it's brains. It's a three-part plan. Three-part plan. And hopefully one of them works. The storage room and equipment room. Okay. But what we have over here is pretty interesting. This is the lookout position. Look here. Lookout port. Now, do these normally slide open? They would. This would flip open. It's just oval viewing slit. There'd be nine guys sitting here with binoculars. This is the kind of stuff I love. The uh, texture, huh? decomposure of stuff over yeah, yeah, decades yeah. and decades. Yeah. This blue chair is kind of ominous. There's one in here too. It sort of looks like an execution chamber. That's what I was thinking. It looks almost <laughs> like a, yeah, exactly what you were saying, like an electric chair. What is up there? That up in there. And you see how it's a cylinder that wants to rotate? Yeah. That is the Mark 38 director. That is the gun sights for the big guns. I'm actually climbed up this hole. flashlight real quick go up in here there we go wow look at that
It's just nuts in there. Have you been up in there? Yes, I have. A couple times. It's even crazier to think the people who went up there constantly were probably getting up there in two seconds. Just because they were so used to doing it over and over. Where me, it takes me 10 minutes to climb up and down there. All right, coming into the darkness. Really dark in here. Here we go. Holy cow, look at this. Wow. This is called CEC, the Combat Engagement Center. Look at the IBM tape, computer tape back there. Oh yeah. Remember that stuff? Wheels? Yep. These are weapons consoles? These are weapons consoles. Ronald Reagan converted her basically to a missile boat. She's got the big guns, but she also carried harpoon anti-ship missiles. She carried 16 of those. And she carried 32 Tomahawk cruise missiles, 1,500 mile range, nuclear capable. That means from where we sit right now, St. Louis, Missouri is toast. These two over here are harpoon consoles. This is where you launch weapons, right here. If you were in battle, you would dim the lights like yep. this. Yep. And what was the point of dimming the lights from the red, the, the white and the red to the blue? What red light gets you is it doesn't destroy your night vision. If you're in white light, your eyes are bleached. And they found that, that blue works as good or even better. This cabin right here, General Hap Arnold. General of the Air Force. No kidding, 1943. 1943, November 43. Admiral Ernest King. Oh yeah. Chief of Naval Operations, November 1943. So 1943 was the big year for these rooms, as far as yep, name, name yep. recognition. Well, that two weeks, that November of 43, when Roosevelt was on board, and they you know, stayed everybody there. going to meet Uncle Joe Stalin. Are the floor safe to walk on in here? Yes. Okay. You can see after being laid up so many years, you know, things just start to fall apart after a while. What is the significance of the H, D, and the C? I'm guessing hot? Hot. Cold and drinking. Drain. Drain, okay. This is what's called the flag bag. Right above us is the signal bridge, and there's these, this box and this rack where all the signal flags hang. Well, this is the bottom level of the signal flag, so right behind here, there'd be a bunch of cloth flags hanging down. Oh, okay, this. gotcha. It's called uh, a flag bag. I'm actually inside a bathroom right now, and there's you can see the nozzles for the shower. I don't think the water works, though. You see these all through the ship. This is called a bullseye, and once you learn how to read it, this is uh, essentially an address, like the address painted on your curb. We are on the second deck. We are at frame 50. You now there's frames down along the ship. It goes down to about, I think it's about 212. Zero, we are on center line. L, it's living space. And the division responsible is second division. That's a deck division, bosun's mates. So every one of these will be different and it tells you where you are on the ship. We just stepped off the top of the citadel. That is the forward edge of the armored shoe box that's in the ship. QA, AD, quick acting armored door. This is called a pit o death. I can see why they call it that. You, that yeah, makes, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm not gonna get too close to the edge, but look down there. That's, uh, that's sketchy. There's another one on the other side. So that goes, it. how deep down does that go to the very bottom of the ship? Pretty much. Wow. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's impressive. Yes, it is. It's so easy to see something like this. And it's, oh, it's just, it's an exhibit, it's a museum. You know, men never lived here. 
you know it's this empty space oh it's cool and everything but but a lot of times you don't get the reality of what you're seeing remember the explosion in turret 2 they tried to pin it on someone it was complete bs okay how they tried to pin the accident on this guy saying this it wasn't an accident this guy did it this was deliberate and it wasn't okay that's the gentleman's bunk right there his name was clayton hartwig that was signed by his sister and this is not official policy of the ship but there are a number of us who care about this and care about his memory and we every time we get down here we check and make sure that the light is on on his bunk gun two turret two yeah that means those racks these three, the three over there and the three over here, these are dead men. This is a dead zone. These are guys who lost their lives in that accident. Wow. And that's rather sobering. Yeah, I'm going to do the sidestep motion. Easier that way going down. Yes, it is. There's a blonde with a tan over here. Note the crossover pipe. You use the steam twice. Goes through the high pressure turbine, comes through the crossover pipe, and you blow it into the low pressure turbine. You get two passes off the steam. Wow, look at this stuff. Red is a stern. And that's how you, you know, oh, turning that wheel is, is what gives you the steam input and the RPMs and the speed. What happens when one of these steam pipes breaks? And if you're in this corner? Yes. You're not getting out. Bingo. You die. And that is something that is not unique to this ship. That is the state of existence of engineers. And when you're doing this stuff, you're 20 and indestructible and you don't think about it but you know it and your buddy knows about it it's in the back of your mind it's in that dark recess it doesn't come out very often and you don't cry about it because he's not crying for mommy you're not crying for mommy am I gonna cry for mommy but you know it you don't think about it but the reality is snipes engineers when things on warships go wrong these guys, the men who sail below, die. You see all these valves, all these lines? It looks very incomprehensible, doesn't it? Kind of confusing. Kind of confusing. When you come down, when you're new, and you come down in these spaces for the first time, what you say to yourself is, my God, I will never learn all this. And what happens is you're down here and you're working with this stuff. And believe it or not, you get to the point where every single valve, every single line down here, you know what it is, you know what it does. You absorb it and it becomes part of you. Now we're over in that other corner I told you about. Because this right here is the escape trunk. This is how you get out in an emergency. This is seawater induction. 
This is Grace's baby, the bilge dragon. This thing pumps something like 20,000 gallons a minute. This goes out the bottom of the ship, there's a scoop down there. And this scoops up seawater and takes it in there and blows it through there underneath the turbine where it goes through a bunch of little tubes. You see all the tubes? Oh yeah. So these are condensers and you've got cold seawater running through the tubes and then the steam, the used steam hits those cold tubes and turns back into liquid. If you want to sabotage a ship, if you want the ship to not move, this is where you do it. You throw a handful of bolts in there, you throw a wrench in there, you throw a paint scraper in there. And those gears get honked up, go crunch, crunch, this ship ain't going anywhere. You think that's where they got the term, throw a monkey wrench in it? Could be. Normally this would be closed up, but you can see inside the steam drum. Yeah. This would be half full of water and half full of steam. Over here on the left on the left of this pipe, you see those oval holes, those big holes? Oh yeah. Right right along there. That's where water goes down into the boiler. Oh yeah, I see them. Okay. So the water level in a boiler is critical. If the water level in here is too high, the steam, you get what's called carryover, and that steam will go over to the engine rooms, the water will hit the turbine blades and you'll destroy the turbines. The superheated side, this is the saturated side. Saturated steam is wet steam. Superheated steam is dry steam. What that means, it is steam with no water in it. That is where hell happens. You have what's called a gooseneck. And inside the burner tip is what's called a sprayer plate. The oil is spinning in that area that's actually called the whirling chamber. And on this side, you get a cone of atomized oil spraying out. And that cone is on fire. Big time. I take a lighting off torch. This is going to have a bunch of asbestos rope that's tied a, around that's it. Doesn't sound safe. Asbestos? It is what it is. Doesn't burn. <laughs> okay. Doesn't burn. You All know, right. you're not you're not licking it. You're not rubbing it True. on your face. True. It's dipped in jet fuel. And you get out your Zippo lighter and you light it on fire. So this is burning like a torch, uh, like a Roman torch. I hit this. Now oil goes in, and because fire's in there, it catches on fire. Poof, fires are lit. I withdraw this, put it in the dunk can, put the fire out, close the door, and do my air adjustment. And you're done. And the fires are lit. Looks like someone's written something here, carved something into the desk. Let me see. I don't know what it says. Start my heart. Kickstart my heart. Motley Crew. Yeah, Motley Crew. That's a Motley Crew lyric. Okay. Kickstart my heart. Here's the Brominator. Yeah. Yeah. It's the Brominator. The Brominator 7. This is an old piece of machinery right here. We've got green seawater. We've got blue fresh water. We've got red fire main. Fuel oil. Again, green lines. Seawater. Wow. This is pretty incredible looking. This is where you shoot the guns from. These are 100% analog. This is not digital. These are the triggers here. But these are the triggers. If you were to pull that. Yes. That is the hand firing key. This is automatic and this is salvo. What these switches are for is to line up all the different guns and equipment and, and, and fire control equipment on the ship. That means number one turret inside the turret locally can fire number three turret aft. 
and vice versa. It all depends on how you line these switches up. This is a roster of everyone who worked in this department on VJ Day, Tokyo Bay. Look at the workmanship. That looks like it was done on a typewriter. What year would you say this was? That's VJ Day. That's World War II. Oh yeah, there you go. If you look over here, there's a couple of uh, these circular tubs. In World War II, these were quad 40 guns. Those are the ones everybody's seen in the World War II newsreels, the pom-pom guns. We going out there? Yep. That's awesome. Where do you get in there? Oh, we're going in? Oh, heck yes. I like that. I'm going in. This is the lever that you pull. You will probably, I pull this down. It's gonna go down. Am I safe right here? Yes, you are. Okay. Oh yeah. Now the gun's open. Now what we would do, a five inch canister, and that gets put here, put up in here, and you ram it with your hand. The can trips the paws and the block comes up. Holy cow. That was loud with even nothing in it. There's a person sitting over there with a foot pedal. and they would press on the foot pedal, and what the foot pedal does, I can do like this. Bang. What does that mean, long passages? Well, that's... It's a long passage. It's a long passage. <laughs> right. that's, that's significant oh, distance. Yeah, I believe Disney drew that. I could be wrong. But that, it, that was a real historic piece. I know what those are. These? <laughs> yeah. Those are fuses. No. Okay, I'm wrong. I was Vacuum incorrect. tubes. Oh, I, I, meant, I meant to say they were vacuum tubes. That's what I meant to say. One hand for your equipment, <laughs> one hand for you. Okay. And watch your head and watch your back. It's like something that Harry Potter would use. Like a, like a wand. Indeed. Poof. That's the bilge. Hmm. That's the bottom of the compartment. So when you see a rodent in here, you would be like, there's a bilge rat. The irons. Yeah. Keep hit, I keep hitting my head. That's what I get for being a tall guy walking through here. You're taller than me, how tall are you? Six, Six foot three. Yeah. I keep cranking my head yeah. on these things. How many does it take to do, undo one of these screwdrivers right here? Well, the, mm -hmm. yeah, you see they're, they're just... Um, <laughs> It's a noise maker for kids. That's right. <laughs> so you know what this is used for, right? Number two pencils. Number two pencils. <laughs> what is the noise we're hearing now? Uh, that actually is the bosun's call for lunch. I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Um. <laughs> You through there, Jay? Ugh. It's safe to say I know what this is. It is safe? Yeah, it's safe to say I know what this item is. Okay. So what people will say when the guns shoot, the, the ship moves sideways. And that's not true? No, 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 no. So you're breaking myths today? Yes. <laughs> Come on, I do it. <laughs> <laughs> is that your reaction to being in the brig? Yeah. Oh, you 
go on the app and you can look all around the ship. Yep. What's the name of the app? Battleship Iowa. And the crowd goes, ooh. Yeah. That's about what I did when that thing made that noise right yeah. there. I think I <laughs> made that noise. <laughs>